Hello and welcome to Shine Chats. I'm Kim Smith, National Sales Director for Henry Shine, and I'm happy to be joined by Dr. Sydney Shapiro, Pediatric Dentistry Resident at New York Presbyterian Hospital and former president of the American Student Dental Association. So welcome, Sydney. Looking forward to hearing from your perspective on how dental students and young adults are dealing with professional and personal challenges that may be impacting their wellness and mental health. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. I always like to start out with, you know, we're talking about wellness and, and mental health. My first question I'm gonna ask you is around mental resiliency. And I always like to start out with like, what is the definition of resiliency? Because sometimes it can become confused. Uh, it's the capacity to withstand or recover quickly from difficulty is a form of toughness. And that's really just the typical dictionary uh, definition. So my first question for you is based on your experience as a dental student, how do you define mental resiliency? I define it, like you said, the ability to you know adapt to challenges. I think throughout dental school, I went in thinking, I'm resilient, I got this, I'm tough. And then Looking back over the last six years since I started dental school, I realized how much growth and resilience I have built um, going through all of the challenges that I faced in dental school and having this network that I've made to get through those challenges. No, that's awesome. Was there like what specific stressors uh, do dental students face? Could you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. And I think there are several stressors from just getting into dental school, your DAT and interviews and what school are you going to go to and get accepted to? And then you get to dental school and you go through the didactic curriculum. At least this is how our school did it and several dental schools do. And you're inundated with all of this information that you're expected to, to learn, to process, and then be tested on. All the while you're, you know, preparing for your professional career, you're trying to make new friends in this group um, of dental students. After the didactic portion, you move on to clinic. That is a stressor in itself. Some people have that transition, it's smooth and great, but I would say for the majority of us, there's always a struggle going from studying in the classroom, which most of us, by the time we get to the end of those didactic um, portions of dental school, we've had plenty of time to figure out how to do that. And then we're faced with patients. And it's a very exciting time, but it's also a whole different set of responsibility. You're responsible for someone else's health. You're responsible for learning. Nobody goes into dental school knowing exactly what to do and how to do it. Um, being okay with those the failures um, and the mistakes that you're going to make, I think that that is a whole nother level of stressors that we face as dental students. And then as we end dental school, we have uh, our board exams that we take, the written, the clinical um, portions of the, the licensing exams. And then if you are applying for residency, you have residency applications and interviews, job interviews, and really figuring out what those next steps are um, as you go out into the real world of uh, dentistry and practice. And so I think throughout dental school, there are all of these different stressors and they they change, but it stays pretty consistent that there, there are those stressors for dental students throughout their time. Wow, that's really a lot. I mean, I think you hit on everything throughout the journey of someone just applying, right? The DAT to the study, to the didactics, to after you're done there, now you're looking, you know, to explore your next step in that journey and all of those things. What was most for you and specifically, what was uh, kind of the, the biggest stressor for you? I think for me, the biggest stressor was when I got to dental school, I had a class of 80 students, which was great, but it also, it, I was able to compare myself to everyone else mm -hmm. and you never know what everyone else is going through. So it's hard to compare, but if someone, you know, got something really easily or left the library before I did, or didn't leave the library before I did and was there, I was always comparing myself. And I think that that was the 
biggest stressor because once I realized to stop comparing myself to others, I was able to go through the other stressors that we just talked about more easily because I didn't have that, you know, that comparison. That makes sense. No, it, it absolutely does. I think for some, it could fuel it. For others, it could be that thing that you, gosh, if you, if, if you are able to get beyond it, right, and you are comparing yourself to yourself when you're going through the process. So sounds like you, you've done an excellent job doing that because you, you are where you are right now, residency and been very successful. So I appreciate you sharing that uh, piece with us and being vulnerable to share it too. So thank you. No, thank you. It's always a work in progress. Absolutely. absolutely. (laughs) So just for me, like how, how did you cope um, with the other stressors? I know you just talked about like what you most, um, you were most up against in terms of what was the biggest stressor for you, but some of the other things, uh, how did you cope? Is there any other ways that you uh, coped with that? Absolutely. I think for me, the biggest three things were um, a sense of community, uh, my taking care of my physical health and setting boundaries. So the community for me, that looked like my friends, my family, outside of dental school and my classmates, the friends that I made throughout dental school, those communities were, you know, different and were all needed to get through dental school. Um, And in addition to my dental school classmates, making the communities with faculty administration, um, those around me during dental school to help get through those years together. The other thing was taking care of my physical um, health, my mental health as well, Um, whether that meant like turning all of the computers, everything off and just going for a walk, going to the gym. Um, I've recently been doing acupuncture, which I think is great for for my overall health as well. Um, Finding a therapist that worked for me and getting through through dental school um, and all the stressors that come with it by really focusing on um, improving my mental health and then setting boundaries. I think for me, being able to say no um, and not feel obligated to say yes, because someone asked me or expected something um, from me, if I was able to protect myself. Um, And I think part of that boundaries is realizing that you're not going to wake up every day and be like, I'm happy. I'm tough. I got this. That's not you know, we have so many emotions and recognizing the emotions as they come, acknowledging them and being okay with where I was in the moment was absolutely part of how I, I coped with dental school. Wow. That's really, that's really big. And it's very, um, I would say higher, higher level of emotional intelligence, right? When you understand your emotions and why you may feel a certain way and what you need to ensure you are the best person you can be. Has at any point in time where, you know, you talk about the like sense of community and your ability to, to, to do that, have you ever had any interaction with any of your other classmates, I guess, if looking back where that was really helpful for them as well? Absolutely. Um, I think from, from day one, just being in, whether it was in the preclinic together, in the library together, I have friends who, you know, we went through a lot of things over the four years of dental school in our personal lives. And had we not had the community to lean on each other, that we were a group of people who understood what each other was going through, whether um, it's professionally and throughout dental school. And so whether it was you know loss, illness, um, stuff like that, getting through those personal challenges. I have several friends who the community that we built in dental school is incredibly important in getting through those difficult years together. Wow, that's tremendous. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Uh, what, what pressures do students face in choosing their path after school? Because I know you talked about that at the bit beginning. That's really a, a big point. Um, and I, I think sometimes, you know, it could be, be very scary. So can you share a little bit about, you know, your experience of choosing your path? Yes, absolutely. I also was very scared about choosing my path. And again, having that expectation of like, am I doing the right thing? Um, I think once I realized it might not be right, or if it's right in this moment, then that's what makes it right. It doesn't have to be right for the rest of my life. Um, And I think that that's one of the pressures that students face. 
I, where I went to, to dental school, a lot of the students go into a residency program and a lot of dental students come in on day one and know what they want to do. Um, and I was not like that. And it wasn't until my third year, really right when applications for residencies were um, opening up was when I, I decided on pediatric dentistry. Um, but it took me a lot of shadowing, um, talking to dentists in all different specialties and academia and private practice to really figure out what I wanted to do. And I think that there's this pressure that people um, or dental students expect that they they know what to do next and we we don't um and even when we do know what to do next sometimes our our desires and our goals can change and i think that being okay with that and going into something that makes you happy even if it's in that moment is a sense of comfort and um you know success in your professional life wonderful thank you so just another question. This is this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> just one more question, because I, I really love this. Um, I love our conversation. I love I love the topic for several reasons. But, um, you know, thinking back on the students that are coming behind you, how can the dental profession help students and young dentists build resiliency? That's a great question. I think. Dental students don't always, and we talked about this before, my own experience, I thought that I was resilient and tough going into dental school. I don't think that there is an expectation to be resilient the day that you get to dental school. And I think a lot of it is a built and learned practice. Um, so I think it starts with, whether it's administration, faculty, integrating it into the dental school curriculum, whether that means, I know at Columbia, we, they started a class that starts from first year and goes through fourth year um, that talks about mental health, physical health, wellness, um, and ha has this space for students to have conversations about um, these topics. And I think that, you know, that's step one. I think that that's great. I also think that having, um, excuse me, having open um, conversations amongst faculty, administration, students, um, and a sense of community among these, the dental school, not just your class, but how, how the, the school functions as a whole in that community. I think that that sense of community helps build resilience. And then going you know, past dental school, again, sense of community, whether that's through your organized dentistry, um, your local state societies or through like your, your career, um, mm -hmm. having the, that community and openness to talk about the difficulties and challenges that we face is very important. Oh, this has been really great, um, Dr. Shapiro. So <laughs> I just wanna thank you. Thank you again, Sydney, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in. And we look forward to you joining us again at a later time. Thanks again. It's always a pleasure to, to be with you and to speak with you. Thank you. It was so great to be here today.